Hey, my name is John Noyes, and I'm here because uh, I've been changed. I haven't always been like this. Something happened about 15 years ago, and my story actually starts as, as I think all good stories do with, uh, I met a girl. I had recently moved from Washington, D.C. to Southern California. My bags were still packed in the back of my sister's car. Uh, we were at a work function for her, and I, I met this girl, Rihanna. Uh, a few months later, eventually we ended up starting dating and that Easter, my brother sent me an email that I thought was the funniest thing in the world. It was mocking Jesus, it was mocking the cross, it was mocking Christianity in general, it was mocking uh, the Easter holiday. And I had to share this with my girlfriend, my now wife, Rihanna, and uh, she didn't find it funny at all. You see, Rihanna, I didn't know this, but she was a Christian and uh, she did not appreciate the humor that I found in this uh, mocking email. That event right there started something amazing in my life, a journey. You see, Rihanna eventually wanted to become uh, a part of a church, so she asked me if I'd go with her on a Sunday morning, and I've done crazier things for the affections of a woman, uh, than, and so I went, went to church with her. Uh, the pastor, Pastor Dave Polis, and his wife Amy, and I went with Rihanna, and I went with a stack of resources and things to say to him because I took pride in debating Christians. So I went in and I asked all my questions and a lot of them he said, I have no idea, John, that's a great question. But at the end of that class, something happened. Uh, as we stood up, they offered membership to my wife and he shook my hand and he said, you know what, John, we have enough members right now. We don't want you as a member, thanks for coming. And while that might sound harsh or, or mean or, or whatnot, it, it wasn't, it was perfect. Because if he had said, hey John, you know what, why don't you become a member of the church and we'll work on you or something like that. All of my preconceived notions would have been confirmed about Christianity. You just want me, uh, my butt in your seat and you want my dimes in your coffers. That's all you care about. But he wasn't uh, like that. Pastor Dave then turned me around to his bookshelf and handed me an apologetics book. In that interaction with the word of God, something happened. My heart was being ministered to and it was being softened. I came to the place in my life where I thought the Christian worldview was the best explanation for the way things really are. You see, I was an atheist and the reason why I was an atheist is, is because I thought atheism offered the best explanation for reality, the way things really are. I thought atheism described the world as it really is. My conversion story isn't one of those miraculous things where God appeared to me or he spoke to me and at one moment I went from atheism to Christianity. Mine was a process and somewhere in that process I started saying, you know what, I'm going to live consistently with the world around me. I'm going to press into my atheism. And I'll tell you what, there, it, it was painful in, in many ways. Uh, it, well, one of the things I like to call is, is I experienced uh, the bump of bad. You see, I started living consistently with my atheism and it affected my moral life. Because if atheism was true, I, I came to the conclusion that I, I could come up with my own ethics, I could come up with my own morals, but they weren't grounded in any objective principles. They weren't uh, transcendent in any type of way. They were subjective, up to me. And if, if, if I can do what I want, why not just live that way and press into it? And then as I started the process, this, this bump of bad that I was experiencing, I started to realize that my major objection, the nail in God's coffin that I used to raise to every Christian, the problem of evil, became an increasing problem, not for the Christian to, to answer, but for me to answer as an atheist. How could I answer for all of this evil in the world? What is evil on my worldview? I couldn't answer it. I, I had no answer because, because according to me, at best, Morality, right and wrong, are subjective. Up to me, I make them up. But yet the world around me seemed to have a moral depth. Evil itself seemed to exist. The next bump was the bump of stuff. Why, where'd everything come from? Why is there something rather than nothing? As, as, a, as a, a young man, I used to love going out and looking at the stars. And in Washington, D.C., I'd go to the, the vice president's compound, his house. There was a, an observatory open to the public. And, and, and you could just gaze through the telescope out at the stars and, and they, then they point it for you in the great locations and you could see planets and, and amazing things. Well, where did all this come from and why is it here? 
My naturalism, meaning meaning everything that exists is the product of a naturalistic process, could not explain that first cause. You know, everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. What was that cause? Now that's the Kalam cosmological argument. I didn't know that at the time. And then the third thing that really struck me about the world around me as I sought to live consistently with my atheism and, and it caused me major issues, pain. I call the bump of me. There is something in each and every one of us that we are constantly aware of every waking moment, and that is ourselves. We know who we are and that we exist. We have a soul, is what a lot of people call it. And we have a conscience because of that soul. And then as, as all of these three bumps, right, the bump of bad, the bump of stuff, and the bump of self started to collide together on me, something had to give. Because at a certain point, my conscience was awakened to, to the way that I was living. My conscience was awakened to the way the world really is. But I found myself in my journey at starting, to, uh, starting to believe in the Christian worldview. And the more and more I dug into Christianity, the more and more I started talking to Christian apologists, I started realizing that, that the, the answers to reality are out there in the Christian worldview. You know, why did I become a Christian is one of the questions I get asked the most. And this is really important, so I want you to pay attention. I'm not a Christian because it makes me feel good. I'm, I'm a Christian because it's true. I'm a Christian because I think Christianity offers the best explanation for the way the world really is. I'm a Christian because I think Jesus really rose from the dead. I ground my worldview in facts, in knowledge, and I lean into things. Do I have all the answers? No. I still have tons of questions. But so far, every single time I've leaned hard into a question, I found a responsible, a good, solid answer from the Christian perspective. And I can't say that was true about atheism. Another question I often get, now that I'm a, a Christian, no longer an atheist, how's life changed? Everything on the inside has changed for me. And it's manifesting itself in ways that, that, are, that are clear to see. For example, I, I'm no longer a paralegal at a law firm. I, I became a pastor and a Christian apologist. But ultimately, I have this relationship that they can't ever be severed with a, an eternal God. So my Christian worldview informs everything I do. It really does to, to how I spend my money, to how I spend my time, to who I spend my time with, to what I do for a vocation. There's not one area I hope that's left untouched um, by Christ because he's worth it and he saved me. Now, sometimes the, the, the a question that I get is uh, what advice would I give to my curious skeptic friends, maybe, uh, my family? Uh, I'm the only Christian in my family. Two, two or three things. One is lean in to your worldview. Your worldview says certain things about the way the world is. Is what it's saying true though? Does it line up with your experiences? Does it line up with how reality seems to be ordered? Start thinking about these bumps, the same things that I experienced, the, you know, the, the, a moral depth to reality. Where did everything come from? What's of your conscience? How do you explain these things according to your worldview? Lean into it. Read broadly and, and diversely and read a lot. Don't settle for pop atheism or, or these deconversion stories, for example, that are becoming so popular. Lean heavy into them. And I think when you do, you'll see, just like I saw, that the Christian worldview is the best reason for the way the world really is.